In today's show, I've got five guys I think the Knicks could look to trade for in the future. Maybe at the All-Star break, maybe next NBA offseason. But before we get into the video, I want to ask you this question. To name a random Nick in the comments. Patrick Ewing, he's not random. Carmelo Anthony, he's not random. We've done this on a couple of live shows, and it always turns into an awesome competition. So name a random New York Knicks player in the comments right now. Welcome into New York Knicks Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green, and I want to give a shout out to today's sponsor, Mint Mobile. You can get started today and save big time by going to mintmobile.com slash chat sports. They offer cell phone plans for as low as $15 per month with unlimited talk and unlimited text. Just go to mintmobile.com slash chat sports. I'll have the link to that in the comments and description of today's show. And on today's show, I kind of wanted to talk about something besides Donovan Mitchell. So we're going to look at five New York Knicks trade targets that the Knicks could look to trade for in the future. Maybe at the All-Star break, maybe next offseason. Five guys the Knicks could trade for, not named Donovan Mitchell. But first, I want to take a look at the guys on the roster, the Knicks, they have a lot of young players. Ten players on the team under the age of 25 years old. So they have a lot of youth on this roster. They also have a lot of draft picks coming up. So if you have ten players under the age of 25 and you have 11 first-round picks in the next seven years and potentially four first-round picks in 2023, if all of those can fail, the Knicks, they need to consolidate assets. No way are you going to pick 11 players in the first round over the next seven years. No way are you going to pick four first round players next year. No way you pick seven players over the next four years when you already have 10 players under the age of 25. So the Knicks, they have a lot of assets. They have a lot of players under the age of 25 that are young and haven't reached their potential. But no way will all those players be on this roster. So the Knicks, and Leon Rose knows this, the Knicks, they need to consolidate assets and go after a big fish. We're going to give you five guys I think the Knicks could target in a second. But this is why you subscribe for Knicks News, Knicks Rumors, videos every single day. Daily Knicks coverage. It's 100% free. News, rumors, breaking news. When news drops, we get you guys a video whether I'm in the studio, whether I'm at the crib. And we have been growing like crazy here on New York Knicks Now by Chat Sports. Almost 6,000 subscribers added in the past three months. That's a credit to all of you. Become a real one. Subscribe to Knicks Now right now for videos every single day in live shows. We're going to continue to do those. The number one guy I think the Knicks could look to trade for in the coming weeks, days, months, maybe at the offseason. What about Shea Gilgis Alexander? Someone that I think has been linked to the Knicks quite a bit. There's been some ties to him. There's been some rumors floating around. If he really wants to be with the Oklahoma City for a long time, and he's a really good basketball player. He's been in the NBA for four seasons and gotten better every single year. 11 points his rookie year, 19 in the sophomore season, 24 in his third year, and almost 25 in his fourth year. Three-point percentage was a little bit low this year at about 30%, but back in 2020 and 2021, he shot it at a 42% clip. I think SGA, Brunson, and RJ Bear would be a fire We'll call it a threesome if you want to laugh, you can pause. Would be a fire threesome the Knicks could build around for the next five, six, seven years in the NBA. And wouldn't it be a wet dream for Sam Presti to trade Shea Gilgis Alexander for six, seven first round picks? That would be the most Oklahoma City Thunder thing of all time. I do want to ask you this question before we get to more trade targets. Who would you rather have on the Knicks? Would it be SGA? Or Donovan Mitchell. Some people like SGA. Six foot five, can play the point, can also play the two. He could fit really well alongside Brunson and is a better defender than Donovan Mitchell. But Donovan Mitchell has that superstar talent and just that name recognition that I know a lot of you guys like. But I want to hear from you. Pick one. Type SGA for Shea Gilgis Alexander or DM for Donovan Mitchell.
We told you guys about Mint Mobile off the top of the show, but let's tell you why you should switch over today and get started with them, a new cell phone provider. They offer unlimited talk and text plans for as low as $15 per month on the nation's largest 5G network, a mobile hotspot when you got to get on the Wi-Fi and help out a homie. And did I say plans starting as low as $15 per month? My favorite thing about Mint Mobile, though, is how easy it is to switch over. You get to keep your same phone. You get to keep your same phone number. You don't got to go to the store. You can switch over from the comfortability of your house. And you may have heard of them before. They're owned by the famous actor Ryan Reynolds. Start, start saving money today. Go to mintmobile.com slash chat sports. That link's in the comments and description of today's show. What about Joel Embiid? Don't click out of the video. I've got reasons to why Joel Embiid might be wanting to get out of Philadelphia in the coming years they really haven't been all that good in the playoffs and things could get sour in philly really really quick how many times has james harden played with another superstar in the nba and kind of worn his welcome out we saw it with chris paul we saw it with kevin durant we saw it with kyrie irving we saw it with russell westbrook we've seen it everywhere harden goes that situation goes to shit and i think that might happen really soon in Philadelphia. Let's look at how, at how Philadelphia has fared in the past five seasons in the playoffs. Back in 2017 and 18, they lost in round one in five games. In 2018, they lost in round two in seven games. That was the shot where Kawhi, Kawhi Leonard had the greatest bounce of all time. In 2019, they also lost in round one. And they got swept because there was a lot of dust on the ground. In 2020, they lost in round two, seven games. And then 2021, they also lost in round two. I also want to say if Doc Rivers and the Philadelphia 76ers struggle again this year, this will be the last year with Doc and there might be a big switch up coming in Philadelphia. Joel Embiid, though, he's one of the best players in the NBA this past year, in my opinion, probably should have been the MVP, averaging almost 31 points per game, 12 rebounds, shooting 50% from the field, and 37% from three. I know there's some concerns about his availability and his durability. Played in 68 games last year, 51 in the prior two seasons, and 64 in 2018. I really do think in Philadelphia, things could go left very quickly. You have the James Harden factor. You have Doc Rivers on really the last chance of his to prove that he can be the coach going forward. And if you struggle this year, lose again in the first round, and they fire Doc Rivers, Joel, can, uh, Joel Embiid may be the guy that starts to force his way out of the current city that he's hooping in. But I want to take the pulse of all Knicks fans right now. If he became available, should the Knicks pursue a Joel Embiid trade. The Knicks, they have the assets and they have the youth players and the young players to get a deal done. But I want to hear from you. Type T for trade or type P for pass. Another guy. What about Devin Booker? I know we just signed that mega extension with Phoenix, but I think it's very similar to the situation in Philadelphia. Could that time and that era of Booker and Phoenix be coming to a close? I think there's three things you got to think about as to why Devin Booker might want out of Phoenix in a couple of years. Has their championship window passed? Have they peaked? Will they ever get back to the finals? Last year in the playoffs, it felt like they were just lacking that next little push or that it factor. And Chris Paul, he's 37 years old. How much longer is he going to be able to play at that championship level that put the Phoenix Suns into that championship stratosphere. I don't know. I think his best years are behind him, and we kind of saw him start to fall off a little bit in the playoffs last year. And DeAndre Ayton, he already wanted out of Phoenix. I somewhat get a feel that kind of the organization and that team chemistry feel is not all there. If DeAndre Ayton already wanted out. Chris Paul was 37, and the championship window might have already passed. Could Booker start to force his way out? And I think the most important thing is, He's part of the CAA Mafia. If you know, you know. What about player number four? Anthony Davis, AD. We know that he's been linked to the New York Knicks for a very long time. Before he was traded to the Los Angeles Lakers, he had two teams he wanted to go to. It was the Lakers and the Knicks. Those were the two teams on his short list of destinations that he wanted to play. Kind of similar with Devin Booker. Let's take a look at three reasons why I believe AD 
might be on his way out and then playing his last season with the purple and gold. I think the Lakers are one bad season away from rebuilding. They have no draft picks, and LeBron James is a free agent next season. So if the Lakers are bad this season, they don't make the playoffs, LeBron enters free agency, are they really going to build around Anthony Davis where they have no future first-round picks until 2025? I don't think they would. I think that organization is too smart, and they may look to dump Anthony Davis to the Knicks for a boatload of first-round picks. Kind of like Joel Embiid, though, Anthony Davis, his ability is not a question. It's his availability. And last year, he played in just 40 games. In 2020, he played in 36 games. In 2019, he played in 62 contests. This past year, 23 points, 10 rebounds. It looked good. But he kind of just wasn't that same player he was when the Lakers won the title in the Disneyland bubble. 53% from the field, but only 18% from three. I have some question marks around Anthony Davis. I question if he's a dog and really wants to be one of the best players in the NBA, but this show is about guys that I think the Knicks can look to trade for in the coming future. I think all of them make sense, and I think AD is at the top of that list. But I'll once again pose this question for all the real ones out there watching. Would you want AD on the Knicks? I think it's going to be split 50-50, but type Y for yes or type N for no. And can you really do a New York Knicks trade target video without including Zion Williamson. And I'm not saying all of these guys are guys I want. I'm just kind of reading the tea leaves heel here and thinking about guys that could become available. But as we know, the Knicks and Zion Williamson have been linked for a long time. It seems like anytime Zion, a story about Zion being disgruntled in New Orleans, the Knicks become attached as a viable destination. We also know that Zion wanted to be a New York Knick on draft night and really on NBA draft lottery night. When the Pelicans won the lottery, he was upset and supposedly he said to some people close to him, he was hoping and praying that the Knicks were going to be the team that won the lottery. I also think, and like you do, the Knicks, they could complete the Duke trio of RJ, Cam, and Zion. We know RJ and Zion are best friends. We know that they want to play together down the road. And could we see a better opportunity than Zion playing with RJ in the Mecca. I think that's really the only opportunity those two have to play, at least looking into the crystal ball a little bit. But I do have concerns about trading for Zion Williamson. He's a great player, all the talent in the world, one of the most freakish athletes we've ever seen touch the hardwood. But the Knicks, they've kind of been there and done that. They've traded for the superstar that has injury issues or signed someone like Amari Stoudemire that's had injury issues. It didn't work out. His inability to stay on the floor is a huge question mark for me. His weight is also a problem. How will he evolve? Will he have a long career? I think these are all five um, very important questions that you have to ask yourself if you're going to trade for Zion. The talent's there. The guy's a good dude. But does he have it up here? Does he want to be great? I think these are questions that you have to ask yourself as a front office if you would make a Zion Williamson trade. I'm not sure I would do it. It's a lot of talent to pass up on, so I could easily be convinced. But I want to take the pulse of all New York Knicks fans watching right now. Would you trade for Zion Williamson? We'll do a little deal or no deal. Just type deal or no deal in the comments right now. I also want to say thank you to everybody that made New York Knicks now a part of their day today. If you haven't yet, hit me up on Twitter at MarshallGreen underscore. I'm growing, gaining pretty, some pretty good followers over there, and that's a credit to y'all. I really only want Knicks fans to follow me, so if you bleed blue and orange and you love the Knicks, hit me up on Twitter, and I'll give everybody a follow back that follows me. Just send me a DM letting me know that you came from this video.